Bells on catfish rods ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to catfish and do a catch and cook tonight. Oh! <laughs> Took me like 10 minutes driving to figure that one out. <laughs> what is going on, YouTube fam? Merry Christmas and welcome back to another high adventure video. I absolutely love 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 this time of year probably my favorite time of year honestly that fall winter all the holidays all the holidays capped off with some christmas time we are heading down some sketchy back roads uh maybe here i don't know is this it we're trying to find a bait shop i think i turned too soon there's a bait shop somewhere out here in the boondocks and they apparently have live gizzard shad, which is what I'm after for catfishing. Here we go. I think this is it. There, there are no signs. Though. There are no signs anywhere for this place. Aha, here we go. Now we're on the right path. I'm just relying on the old Google Maps. The googly woogly maps to get us there. This looks... Hmm. This has to be it. It's an old abandoned building. I see bait tanks. Ha ha! We found it. All right, I'm not sure. It's an older gentleman. Kind of reminds me of somebody who might not like cameras, so we're gonna be right back. Good morning. All right, so we've run into one small problem. It's cash only, so I've left my bucket here. We have the bait, we just haven't paid for it. Um, yeah, so now we're on to go find some cash here. Hey, get a room. Sorry, there are chickens out here making whoopee here. Um, aha, ATM. That's what I need. The closest one's 14 minutes away, so we're just going to have to do that. He loads me up with gizzard shat, and he's like, you brought cash, I hope. And I'm like, ha-ha, nope. I do have to remember this time of year, though. I do have to start bringing cash with me uh, because a lot there are a lot of places like pay to park and stuff like that. Um, that require cash, you know, it's like $10 parking fee, all that kind of stuff. And now apparently, like the only place that sells gizzard shad around Lake Murray requires cash. So that's okay. Small hiccup in the process, but we'll go get some cash. I don't always bring my camera with me uh, into some of these places. Like in this instance, I was an older gentleman and I don't know, I just kind of feel out the situation because not everybody's comfortable with the camera. Um, I can't see a bloody thing. Oh, that's... That's nice. Roll up, holding the camera in your hand, walking up to someone. Hey, sir, me and a Santa hat here want to buy some bait. Like, you know, maybe doesn't send off great vibes. You know what I'm saying? Give me your. Oh, jeez. You know, it was quite fortuitous, actually, that we had to come get money because I haven't had breakfast yet. And my ATM is located right at a McDonald's. I mean, is that not just the Christmas spirits telling me something? So let's go get a little Mickey D's before we start our adventure today. Good morning. Um, I'm gonna just do your number one meal, please, with a coffee. Cream and sugar. Five cream, five sugar. You got the Amy Muffin combo. That's me. How you doing? Good, how you doing? Good, good. You look cold. You look cold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice yes, ma'am, you as well. <laughs> That's the $10 I need right there. I can feel you judging me hardcore right now for the cream and sugar. I can feel it. I can feel it through the screen. But you know what? If you're gonna be a YouTuber, you can do anything on the internet where you open yourself up publicly like this. There's gotta be a big element of you that just doesn't care what other people think. As I spit on myself. That morning half bath from McDonald's just hits different. We've got our $10. We've got breakfast. Let's go back, see if that older gentleman will still give us some bait. I think he will now that I've got money. There he is. Just badoodling around on his four wheeler. Okay, let's bring the cash. I think he'll be willing to part with them now. All right, we've got our bait. Let's get out of here. You know what, I, th I feel like it was the Santa hat, honestly. I, it just, it didn't set the tone. You know, I got out of the truck, 
maybe a little too jolly apparently because uh i feel like he took a look at the santa hat and then he kind of looked at me and and, and it was definitely like there was definitely a mood shift so you know if you're meeting somebody for the first time during the holiday season um or just going anywhere maybe in general in public maybe ditch the santa hat i don't know though because the lady at, at mcdonald's who brought my food out she said she liked it so it can't be all that bad right maybe maybe if you're just meeting somebody out in the country don't show up wearing santa apparel because uh apparently it it, it definitely doesn't uh doesn't doesn't send the right vibe apparently but we got our bait now we're gonna get out of this back country and we're gonna get to the river i'll catch you guys there but first a brief word from our sponsor well hello there are you looking for sheer, raw, rugged power to get you charged up this holiday season? If so, then I am here to introduce to you the new Solix C1000, the latest portable power station brought to you by Anchor. The Solix can charge from 0 to 100% in just 58 minutes when ultra-fast charging mode is turned on, and this power station comes equipped with 6 AC outlets, 2 USB-C, 2 USB, and a car socket. The C1000 has long-lasting battery technology, EV-class LFP batteries with a 10-year lifespan and 3,000 charge cycles, smart temperature control system, ultra-durable industrial-grade components guarantee five times longer lifespan, and a unibody drop-proof design to help withstand your most rugged adventures. This unit also pairs beautifully with Anchor's portable solar power panels, making your off-the-grid adventures a breeze. And with their smart app control technology, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connection, check real-time stats and remote control the power output straight from your smartphone. So click on the link in the description below to get your hands on the Anchor Solix C1000 and start powering your next outdoor adventure today. There we go. It's on. Are you guys still with me? All right. I am trying to figure out where exactly I want to anchor up. The river looks so much different without any leaves on the trees. Like, I feel like I could see, like, landmarkers better, but now... Everything kind of looks the same since everything's naked. There we go. Right there. Pretty deep. All right, let me show you guys the bait that I went and got that we had to spend ten dollars for. Come here, you got it in our little float bucket on the side. These are oh look at that. Everybody is still happy and healthy in here. I was told these are a little bit more hardy than herring, but we've got gizzard shad, little gizzard shad, and they're alive, obviously. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rig these up on a nice little CNT rig with this float. If you guys wanna see this CNT rig in action, see what it looks like on the bottom. I actually just put a video up. I'll have a link to it on my second channel. Um, and you can find it below of what that looks like. And so you kind of see how the Santee rig works and the action you get out of it. It's quite informative, if I do say so myself. There you go, we're gonna drop that guy down there just like that. Ooh, we're gonna see if any hungry catfish are in the area. All right, baby, good luck out there. Good luck. There you go, there you go. Here we go, second rod. Gonna go out that way. Perfect. All right, we're going to hang on to this rod. We've got both rods out, and we are all set. Oh, my gosh. Did you guys see that? Oh, my gosh. We're getting hit right here. He's taking off with it. Uh, did we get him? Got him. What in the world? What in the world? Did you guys see that? Just popped it. Oh, oh, I think that was a gar. I think that was a gar. He just dropped off. That, like, that was swimming around so erratically. Dagnabbit. Gar, stay off my bait. You bum. Get out of here. Make sure the lion's not afraid. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, that was definitely a gar. Golly, I got so excited. Oh, gosh, there's just Right there. Hold up. Hold up. That's got to be a gar, right? I can't get it out of the rod holder. 
No, I think that might be a cat. I think that's, is that a cat? That thing just took off with that bait. We just moved, oh, he just broke, oh, did he break? Or did he just throw the hook? If he threw the hook, that was just a gar. If I still got everything, I still got everything on. That was a gar. I'm surprised I'm still battling the gar this time of year. I mean, it's been pretty cold recently, last couple weeks. I have to head up river or something, do, try something different, because all I've had are just some little hits, and I'm wondering now if all of it's just been gar at this point. All right, guys, we're gonna do something a little bit different. So we moved up to a new spot. We have this bridge right here, and we're sitting in probably about a 10-foot hole. And I've got a live piece of bait on that one, but we're gonna go ahead and take one of our little shiners here. We're gonna butter, or not shiners, one of our gizzard shad, and we're gonna butterfly them out. Try some cut bait. Since the bite seems to be a little finicky today, try this here. If the catfish are having a hard time eating the live bait, they shouldn't be able to resist that right there. Look at that. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Get this out. There we go. I like the current we got rolling through here too. Usually you find a little bit more active fish in the current. Oh, 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 you, you hear that? Hear the crunchy crunch of the reel there? That's what I'm waiting for. Oh, oh gosh, this one right here. There he is. Got him. Got him. That's our fish. Finally. That definitely is the roll of a catfish right there. I can feel him rolling. Now we are cooking. There we go. What do we got? We got a blue. We got a channel. Could be a flat. That doesn't look like a flat. What do we got us here? Looks like a channel. Got a nice channel? Yeah, it's a nice channel. I'll take that. Hey, that's a good eating size. That's a five pound fish. Five pound fish, nice and lean. Finally got one to hit the cut bait. Glad we switched that around. Hooks nice and solid in the top of the mouth, looks like. Yep, 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 there we go. Oh, come aboard. Woohoo! I don't think I've ever had so much trouble catching a catfish out of this river before. Usually I'm catching catfish when I don't want to catch catfish. We're actually just going to sit right back here. We're going to go take care of her here. ASA and please. There he is. Got him. Got him. Dude, either it's stuck on the bottom or that's a really nice fish. I don't know, but that's a good fish. I think that's just a solid fish. Dude, we, we straight yeeted that one. <laughs> now, I am fighting the curd a little bit, so that might be part of it, but come on. Man, alive. Is that a blue? I think that's, an, that's another daggum channel. What? Come on. I thought for sure that I saw the blue tail. It's a darker looking tail. Darker looking channel overall, but it is a channel. That's okay, we'll keep him, we'll keep him. Good hook set on that guy. Right in the corner of the mouth. I guess that's just what they wanted. They wanted the cut bait. It's another good eater right there. It's a little bigger than the last one. Uh, come here you. Yep, yep, there we go. Hey, that's that's seven or eight pounds right there, for sure. Sweet. Ooh, man, when you hook these catfish, if you can get it into that mouth, just so fatty that your line's pretty much gonna have to break because that hook ain't coming out. There we go. I'm gonna sit right back here with the other one. Huh. Nice, all right. Got us a couple fish in the boat now. Took a little longer than I felt like it had to, but we did it. We did it. We completed quest number one. Let's go and get these fish prepped really quickly. I want to show you what we're going to be doing here. We're going to come slide up on the bank for a minute. Got to process this catfish ASA and P. Ugh. A little shallow. There we go. Now, it's a little cold. Normally, I would just hop out in the water, but... I kind of don't want to get wet. Oh, that's pretty solid, nice and sandy. There we go. There we go. Pull the old kayak up right here. All right, we've gone ahead and dispatched our smaller catfish. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna 
get them processed right now and I'm gonna show you why. In just a minute. There we go. Now we're gonna just throw this guy. Throw this right up here. There'll be some minks or some otters. Really happy about that. There we go. A couple of nice channel cap fillets. Next we're gonna cut them up into chunks for marinating. I got to come over here and get Ziploc bag out of my cooler. Aha! Ziploc bag and some Southern Comfort eggnog. I'm gonna give y'all a tip if you've never tried eggnog before. Southern Comfort is a good brand. Another good brand is Dairy Gold. Anything that says Meadow Gold on it, do not attempt. Blech. Meadow Gold, no good. Dairy Gold, just fine. Southern Comfort, just fine. Those are really like the only two, actually three, I've really ever tried, I guess. I'm sure there are some other brands out there. And don't put rum in your eggnog. That's nasty. Just have rum, like, with just rum. All right, if you want rum, just, just drink the rum on its own. Let eggnog stand alone, all right? Let's not, let's not muddy the waters here. That's enough of a sample size. What we're gonna do, I don't wanna waste the catfish, just in case it doesn't taste good. We've got enough right there for a good batch. Shake this up. Smells good. Mmm. I'm gonna just pour a bunch of it right in there. Pour it right all over our catfish. Then I'm gonna seal it up. <laughs> Look at that. And we're gonna let that marinate. That was the reason I was so like so bent on getting out here early and trying to catch catfish, because I want these to marinate for at least a couple hours in the eggnog. I want them to try to soak up that eggnog flavoring. In fact, mmm. Mmm. Oh yeah, that's good. That's good eggnog right there. We got that in there. This, I don't know what we're gonna do with this. What are we gonna do with this? We'll just probably set it on the ice in there. And you know, actually I've got an idea for that. Well, we'll show you guys later here, just a bit. An idea for that as well. We're gonna go ahead and get this other catfish cleaned up as well though. But there you have it. We've got catfish chunks marinating in some eggnog. And we'll see how that tastes here in just a few hours. Put it back in here. Be on our way. Mmm. Nothing says Merry Christmas like a little eggnog hanging out here on the riverbank catfishing. This is the highest of adventures we've had on this channel, I'd say. Mmm. All right, let's get after some more catfish. Hey, right, check this out. This looks like a pretty good spot to me to cook up our catch. Not quite yet, but this is some of the nicest looking land I've seen as far as smooth. Hop out and pull the boat up here. What do we have here? What is this stuff? in the world like old fruit almost looks like i don't know what that looks like you like an apricot i don't know get that out of here got plenty of animal tracks down here i see some see some raccoon or some deer in there somewhere oh there you go this is where they come from oh wait you know what look at this look at this you see i see this right here like drag marks i'll bet you that's beaver Bet you there's a beaver going up in there. Yeah, look at all this wood. Yeah. Hey, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, I could be a tracker. Look. Some fresh cut. <laughs> some fresh cut timber. Drag marks. Good heavens. I was born in the wrong era. Tracker Micah here. <laughs> oh, goodness. What tipped you off, Micah? Was, <laughs> was it... <laughs> Was it the wood? Was it all the timber laying in the water? Was it the timber scattered down? <laughs> oh gosh, I was really proud of myself for about 1.5 seconds. I was like, oh, the, dr the drag marks. Oh, look, something's been chucked in. Oh gosh, uh, wait, what's this? Is this, oh, here you go. No way, no way. This is the beaver tent right here, isn't it? <laughs> Dude, this totally has to be a beaver den right here. Look at all this wood piled up. 
<laughs> oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Man, I thought I was really on to something. I was cooking. I was cooking. Man, gosh. Who let the white kid out in the wilderness? Anyway, this should do well for a fire. Maybe right here in the sand. I think we're gonna throw a couple catfish lines out. I actually, check this out. I brought all this stuff here. Just pretend I didn't go over any of that. Just ignore the last like minute of the video. I brought with me all the stuff needed for, I've got my catfish on a stringer there. I brought all my stuff needed for making a fire. Brought myself my own wood. I'll move this out over here. There we go. And I brought a couple of little sticks here for throwing some lines out. I should, they're not sticks, they're whatever these are, rod holders, that's what they call them. I decided to go ahead and throw the other channel catfish on a stringer because I'd still like to catch and keep a blue cat. It just tastes better. So if we can do that, I'll let the channel cat go. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and get a couple rods out here. All right, a couple rods set. Got him. Got one. We got one already. Good grief. Oh, good grief. Check that out. Sheesh. Not very big. Good. Another channel cat, man. Another channel. Three for three on channel catfish. There you go. That's probably the smallest one of the day. Dang it. Man, there are a ton of blues in this river. What is up? That wasn't out there for 30 seconds. I told y'all there were a lot of catfish in this river. That's why I was surprised. It took us like an hour and a half to get our first one. I'm gonna drop him back in. I don't want another channel. I want a blue. Actually, the odds of getting three channel catfish in a row for the amount of blues I know that are in this river, that's actually... They're not great. That's crazy that we just did that, actually. Oh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We can't... We can't keep a raw line out there. I can't tell if she's got it or not. Yeah, she got it. That might be a gar, just the way it's running. Yeah, it's already at the surface. We might have a gar on here. Well, I don't know. It ain't big. Dude, <laughs> like two minutes in. What is that? That's just a baby cat. Dude, is that another channel? That dude, four for four on the channels. What? Like, get out of here. Look at that fish. You know, that's about right. Here I am wanting a blue, and this is all I can get. Bunch of channels, baby channels at that. Get out of here. Dude, at least he left me my bait. I think we're only gonna be able to throw one rod out because I gotta get a fire going and stuff. And right now, I just, the, the, I'm getting too many bites too quickly, which is a good problem to have in fishing. You don't see me complaining, but uh, I'm still like a blue. There's gotta be a blue out there with my name on it. Let's see, I think we're gonna go like right here. Let's see if we can kind of make a flat surface, use this wood kind of a digging tool. I'm gonna make a little fire pit in the sand here. Yeah, I mean, it's not much, but let's put it this way. I don't want Smokey the Bear to roll up on me and just go full ham on me because I didn't do my part, right? There we go. That's what I want right there. Got a bunch of little stuff coming apart now. Hi! There.
I think we're getting bit again. Good grief. Sitting here enjoying the fire. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, reared back on her. Oh, I don't feel like I'm snagged. It's because I feel like I'm snagged. Dude, she's hung up on something. Come on, baby. I think she's still on there. I'm on the bottom. Or she's around some wood or something. I shouldn't have let her make a run, I guess. No, she's on there. Well, I mean, literally running right towards me. They're going out. Stop. There you go. Come on. Oh, now she's not happy. Oh, there's a boil. Dude, I'm going to freak out if this is another channel. I'm going to freak out. I think it's a little bit better fish. Oh, look at, oh, yeah, that's definitely a better fish. Oh, yeah, that's definitely a better fish. Oh, I just about died on my own, on my own rod holder. Oh, come here, baby. What do we got? Is that a big old blue? Oh, did we finally get a blue? Yes, we did. Look at that. Oh, mama, that is a big old blue. Look at that big old girl right there. Shoo! Oh, that's a that's a piggy. That's a river piggy. Yes. <laughs> that was awesome. Let me feel my line. Oh yeah, dude, my line's like frayed all the way up to here. I think I'm running like 20, 25 pound test though. Look at that fish. Actually, before we admire this fish, let's drag her up a little bit. I've got one piece of bait in the Ziploc bag. My Ziploc bag's floating away. Salem takes me away. Okay. Oh my goodness. So girthy. You know, when that cold weather starts coming on, those bigger cats just become more active. And I hear tell a lot of people say, look at that fish. You know, you won't catch as many catfish as you will like in the summertime, but you have better chances for bigger fish. Like that big old girl right there. Let's weigh it up for fun. I want to just see what she weighs. I'm going to say like maybe, I don't know, I'm gonna say 15, 16 pounds. That'd be my guess. Let's see. Oh man, I'm good. 15.76 pounds. 15 pounds, 15 and three quarter pounds. That's a good kicker fish for the day right there. You know, the, the funny thing is, is yeah, you know, I've been wanting a blue, right? But you guys know me, I like to keep them under 10 pounds. Like it was a fun catch. Obviously great addition to the day, but I'm, <laughs> we're not gonna keep that one, but good fish. There you go, big mama. Woo! There she goes. Yes, sir. Ah, nope, wrong way. Well, can't go that way. I would, like, I mean, you can come back if you want. Here, here. There you go. Are you a little confundist? There you go, go that way. That way! There she is. Are you serious? You're, you're gonna. I literally can't do anything for you. A, a little, a little to the left. Just a little to the left. No, your left. It's gonna be an eagle or something's gonna come down and just snatch that thing. <laughs> there you go. There you go. She's almost there. Dude, her belly's so big it's scraping the bottom. Come on, girly. Yeah. Boink. She just ran into the stringer. There she goes. There you go. It was fun. Thank you. All right. That was epic, but we have ooh, a good looking fire. It's starting to burn down. Got a nice little berm of coals building up. So I think it's time to go ahead and cook up some of this eggnog catfish. What do you guys say? I feel like there's no time like the present. So I think we just got to go do this. Get that out of my face. Let's see. I had a couple big thick pieces in here. I want a couple pieces that are going to burn for a quick minute. Right about, eh, yeah, I like that. Let's grab our pan. Trying to see if we can place that right over the fire there. There we go. That looks pretty good, actually, right there. Got us some canola oil. I'm going to pour right in here. Right to about there. That should be good. Now I've got with me some Louisiana Cajun fish fry, seafood breading mix, 
So we're gonna go for that little sweet and spicy. Got the got the sweet of the eggnog and we got a little Cajun breading. I don't know if that's a good idea, but it just kind of sounded good. I really like this breading. So I just thought, let's roll with it. Put a little in the bottom there. Set that off to the side. Let's get our nuggets out. Now it's been about a little over two and a half hours that these have been sitting in the eggnog. So let's go ahead and drain this off. <coughs> what the? You know, you weren't blowing over here a second ago. <sighs> let's drain that eggnog out. Don't want to drink that now. <laughs> you can't reuse that. There we go. All right. We're going to take our eggnog catfish nuggets. I'm going to drop them right in to the sauce just like that. Perfect. Put this bag back. Add a little more breading over the top. There we go. All right. Sweet. Toss that around in there. See if they smell like anything. Yeah, there's almost like a sweet aroma coming off the little nuggets here. How's this oil looking? Oh man, that's looking pretty good, I think. I'm gonna drop that in. Oh yeah, it's bubbling. Oh, you kidding me? Seriously? I don't know about this, y'all. I just don't know. But we're gonna find out all together now. All right, all the nuggets are in. That's not gonna take long at all. That'll probably seven, eight minutes in there, probably be enough. Make sure the fire keeps going at a good pace. Keep the oil nice and hot, keep everything bubbling like it is. And we'll flip these here in about three or four minutes. Okie dokie, we have our first ever batch of eggnog, spicy eggnog catfish. That's what just we're, we're just gonna go with. Let's say a prayer really quickly. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful day, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this Christmas season, Lord, for the reasons we celebrate it, the birth of your son, and we thank you for that gift that you give us, Lord God. I just pray that you would bless this food to my body now, and I just pray you continue to keep Stephanie and the kids safety while we're apart. Through Jesus I pray, amen. Maybe I should have asked for a little protection from the food as well, but we're doing it to ourselves. Here we go. That's a pretty good looking nugget right there, don't you guys think? Here we go. Don't know if I'm getting much eggnog, to be downright honest with you. Getting that Cajun spice for sure. Okay, so I made a mistake. Never cut your catfish pieces. Cut them into into cubes. Don't cut them into strips. Otherwise, they come out looking like something you pull out of your cat box. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. I honestly can't tell you that I'm tasting any eggnog. The thing that jumps out to me, though, is that the meat, like, itself tastes really good. I don't, I don't taste any eggnog, but, like, I could swear the meat just tastes a little bit more tender. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm just overthinking it, but it sure it sure seems that way to me. And I've eaten a lot of catfish. All right. We're not done yet, though. I still got that other filet. We're going to try one last thing with the eggnog. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We've got our last few nuggets here from that other side of the filet. We're going to do. I'm going to take some eggnog. Pour it into our little dish right here. There we go. Take another drink. Mmm. Mmm. Yes. A thousand times, yes. Put that back in the cold water to keep it chilly. What we're going to do is we're going to go directly into the eggnog like that. And then into our mix. There. I don't know if this will do anything different or not. Last piece right there. Mix them around. All right. We've got more oil heated up. I don't know if that'll do anything different, but we're gonna give it a go. This time the eggnog's not gonna be drained off. I'm trying to get it to stick, fresh eggnog. Whew, it's a messy proposition, I'll tell you that. This is super fun, right here. Next to the river, nice and chilly out, cooking up fresh catfish nuggets. Oh, that one maybe was a little bit much. Got a nice fire going. 
I'm not gonna lie. This is this is high adventure living, hundred percent. All right, let's see. That looks like a promising nugget right there. Here we go. No, uh, no soaking on this one. You know what? Interestingly enough, I think that eggnog really like dumbed down the fishy flavor of the catfish. We'll try another piece here. These weren't soaked, right? Almost feel like it tenderized the meat a bit. Like that eggnog tenderized the meat. And maybe just like, since it was a milk product, that's why it did it. Well, y'all, the conclusion I have reached with the eggnog catfish is that it will definitely get rid of the fishy flavor. But if you were hoping to taste a little eggnog in your fish, you're going to have to soak it for longer than two and a half hours. I don't know. Maybe all day. But I don't know, you guys let me know. Is Do you guys have any suggestions on how maybe we could get the eggnog flavoring infused into the catfish? Or maybe we should just let sleeping dogs lie. We should just say, you know what? You don't, maybe this is a sign. The sign from the catch and cook universe saying that you, you don't want eggnog flavored catfish. Maybe we should just take it as that. Well y'all, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like I kind of failed you today, at least in the recipe department. It just kind of fell flat. Didn't didn't get any of that eggnog flavor I was looking for, but you know, I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you. You know, I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you and tell you that, oh, I got the sweet, I got the spicy, give it a try. Now I'm gonna keep it real with you. I respect you too much. It's what it comes down to. Uh <coughs> I tell you what, like lukewarm eggnog, very poor substitute for when you're thirsty. I've got nothing else. I need to go back and get some water. You know what though? We caught ourselves a nice 15, almost 16 pound blue catfish. Got to make a fire out here on the river. I mean, you know, anytime you get out, you can make a fire, get out to the water. I don't think that's a bad day. I don't think that's a bad day at all. Hope y'all are having a very Merry Christmas season. Make it a great Christmas. Thank you for sticking it out with me today. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Cheers.